The Japanese punitive expedition to Taiwan in 1874, referred to in Japan as the Taiwan Expedition, and in Taiwan and mainland China as the Mudan Incident, was a punitive expedition launched by the Japanese in retaliation for the murder of 54 Rukyuan sailors by Paiwan Aborigines near the southwestern tip of Taiwan in December 1871. The success of the expedition, which marked the first overseas deployment of the Imperial Japanese Army and Imperial Japanese Navy, revealed the fragility of the Qing Dynasty's hold on Taiwan and encouraged further Japanese adventurism. Diplomatically, Japan's embroilment with China in 1874 was eventually resolved by a British arbitration under which King China agreed to compensate Japan for property damage. Some ambiguous wording in the agreed terms were later argued by Japan to be confirmation of Chinese renunciation of suzerainty over the Ryukyu Islands, paving the way for de facto Japanese incorporation of Ryukyu in 1879. Background In December 1871 a Ryukyuan vessel was shipwrecked near the southern tip of Taiwan. 54 members of its crew of 66 were beheaded by the Paiwan Aborigines. The remaining 12 crewmen were rescued by Han Chinese and were transferred to Tainan in southern Taiwan. The local Qing Chinese government officials transferred them to Fujian province in mainland China. From there, the Qing government arranged to send them back home. Diplomacy When Japan sought compensation from Qing China, the court rejected the demand on the grounds that the wild, unsubjugated aboriginals were outside its jurisdiction. This open renunciation of sovereignty led to the Taiwan Expedition of 1874 by the Japanese. The Meiji government of Japan demanded that the Qing government of China punish leaders of the Taiwanese aborigines responsible for the murders of the Rukyuan crew. The Japanese foreign minister Soji Tanyomi went to Beijing and was received in an audience by the Tongji emperor. However, his request for compensation was first rejected because China considered it an internal affair since Taiwan was part of Fujian province of China and the Ryukyu Kingdom had a tributary relationship with China. When Soji Tanyomi claimed four of the victims murdered were from Oda Prefecture, present-day Okayama Prefecture, Prefecture, Japan and asked for compensation again. Chinese officials refused him on the grounds that most of the Taiwanese aboriginals were outside effective Chinese control, and were thus sometimes exempt from judicial action. Charles Legenda, the French-born American military advisor to the Japanese government, as well as Gustave Emile Boissonnade, legal advisor, urged that Japan take the matter into its own hands. Expedition. The Japanese government agreed and sent an expedition of 3,600 soldiers led by Saigo Sagumichi in May 1874. The Japanese won a decisive victory at the Battle of Stone Gate on the 22nd of May. Thirty Taiwan tribesmen were either killed or mortally wounded in the battle, and a considerably greater number wounded. Japanese casualties were six killed and 30 wounded. In November 1874 the Japanese forces withdrew from Taiwan after the Qing government agreed to an indemnity of 500,000 cooping tails, or about 18.7 tons silver. Sir Harry Parks, the British minister to Japan, characterized this transaction as China's willingness to pay to be invaded. Aftermath in 1875 the Qing authorities unsuccessfully attempted to bring the southeast coastal region of Taiwan under their control, dispatching a column of 300 soldiers against the Paiwan. The Chinese troops were ambushed and routed by the Aborigines. 250 Chinese soldiers were killed, and the 50 survivors retreated to Takoff. Legacy Although launched ostensibly to punish the local tribesmen for their murder of 54 Rukyuan merchants, the 1874 punitive expedition to Taiwan served a number of purposes for Japan's new Meiji government. 
Japan had for some time begun claiming suzerainty, and later sovereignty, over the Rukyu Kingdom, whose traditional suzerain had been China. The expedition demonstrated that China was not in effective control of Taiwan, let alone the Rukyu Islands. Japan was emboldened to more forcefully assert its claim to speak for the Rukyuang Islanders. The settlement in 1874, brokered by the British, included a reference to Chinese recognition that the Japanese expedition was in protection of civilians a reference that Japan later pointed towards as Chinese renunciation of its rights over Rukyu. In 1879 Japan referred the dispute to British arbitration, and the British confirmed Japanese sovereignty over the Rukyu, a result which was not recognized by China. Nevertheless, Japan used this as the justification for taking de facto control over Rukyu. Moving the king of Rukyu to Japan and incorporating Rukyu as a prefecture of Japan, the ensuing Chinese protest led to the matter being submitted to U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant as arbitrator, during which Japan offered to split Rukyu between Japan and China. This was refused by China, but a weakened China was unable in practice to stop Japanese incorporation of the islands. The surrendering Aborigines were given Japanese flags to fly over their villages that they viewed as a symbol of peace with Japan and protection from rival tribes. However, the Japanese viewed them as a symbol of jurisdiction over the Aborigines. The expedition also served as a useful rehearsal for a future Japanese invasion of Taiwan. Taiwan was already being viewed as a potential Japanese colony in some circles in Japan. Domestically, the action also mollified those within the Meiji government who were pushing for a more aggressive foreign policy, and who were enraged by the government's refusal in 1873 to attack Korea. It is significant that the expedition took place shortly after the Saga Rebellion, and was led by Saigo Judo and consisted largely of former Satsuma and Saga Samurai. More generally, the Japanese incursion into Taiwan in 1874 and the feeble Chinese response was a blatant revelation of Chinese weakness and an invitation to further foreign encroachment in Taiwan. In particular, the success of the Japanese incursion was among the factors influencing the French decision to invade Taiwan in October 1884. During the Sino-French War, the King Court belatedly attempted to strengthen its hold on Taiwan, and the Chinese Imperial Commissioner Shen Pao Chen made some improvements to the island's coastal defences during the second half of the 1870s. Further substantial improvements were made by the Chinese Governor Lu Ming Chuan in the 1880s. In the wake of the French capture of Keelung during the Sino-French War, however, little was done to improve the poor quality of the King Garrison of Taiwan, and both the French in 1884 and the Japanese in 1895 were able to land successfully in Taiwan.